Hey there everyone and welcome to another Unreal Shoot 'em Up tutorial. Now this is likely to be the final tutorial in this playlist. What we'll be doing in this video is running through how to make a scrolling background and I think what I'll do is I'll run through two different options, one very simple one and I'm going to take one from the content examples. So if you want to follow along exactly with the complex one, as I've mentioned before I would recommend downloading the content examples anyway. Um, and if you haven't, then go ahead and do that. And what we're looking for is this M underscore space background. So it's actually from the demo that they have here. And to find that, you can come down to the example content, and we'll go down to the input examples, and then it's inside of the materials. Or you can just search for this name in the, uh, in the search box. Now, when you find this, we can just right click on this and we'll go to the asset actions, we'll go to migrate, and then just migrate this over to your project and as always make sure that you put this directly in the content folder if you put it anywhere else it can cause problems with the project so locate your project put it in the content folder and hit select folder and it will migrate that over now i've already done that to save a bit of time so we will move back over to our project now okay so what this will bring over you have your examples content and in the examples content you'll have a material now you can obviously just use this right out of the box and skip all of this but uh, what i want to do is run through and break down what's happening so for people who might not quite understand how to make materials and some of the concepts behind what's going into this we're going to run through that in a bit of depth uh, but of course you've got the material here to use and then in your texture folder you'll get the texture which is required for this tutorial now i've gone ahead i've moved this over to my assets and my textures now the other thing I want to do is I'm going to, as I said, make that really simple material and I'm using this background texture. Now this is a really simple image that I found online. Uh, because I found this on the internet I'm not going to share this around with the project but you can literally find this by just typing shoot em up background and this will be one of the search results but all you need is something which looks as though it could tile fairly well on the top and the bottom. And when you have that this is one I want to show straight away. I'm going to go into how to make this into a scrolling background. So with a tileable background or texture, we can come in and just to be safe, we're going to go to the sprite actions and we'll apply paper 2D texture settings. This will just set everything up so that all of the alpha channels and everything are set as we need them to be. And then we'll right click on this again and we'll create material. And I'm just going to call this M underscore BG. So M underscore background. I'm going to go into this and what we'll have here is our texture and the reason we've done that is so that we have a texture sample ready we can drag off of the uvs and we just want a panel node so find the panel node and as i said really really simple literally just going to come in here we can see that we have speed x and speed y so x is going to be left to right y is top to bottom so we want this to scroll down the screen um, or maybe up the screen so we're going to give this a value of one on speed y and we can see that it's moving so we'll hit apply We'll save that, and then if we come back out, we can just drag this onto the background, onto the uh, the back plane at least, and if we wait for this to load, and there we can see um, if we select this, it is going to begin scrolling. It's scrolling a little bit too fast, so we'll find out why. Okay, so my project just crashed. So I've just gone back in and remade this. So we can see that the material is scrolling a bit too fast, and all we really want to do is we can just put this to possibly 0.1 will be fine, rather than 1. So there we go, we can see that's going to be a more acceptable speed. So now if we come back in here, I'll just apply this to my background plane again. And I think what I noticed last time as well, we're also going to want to come in and shrink the plane just so that it fits a little bit better inside of these bounds. So if we come in and press play now, we can see that it's scrolling at a better speed. And based on the direction that's going, it looks as though the enemies are coming towards us in a really kind of pseudo fake way. So that, as I said, is how we can make a very, very simple scrolling background. Now, the other thing is if you wanted to come in and make this a little bit more customizable and flexible, uh, you'd want to right click on the texture and you convert this to a parameter and then also come in and on the... And what we're moving here is the coordinate. So you can make the coordinate a parameterized vector 2D. And all this means is that then if you were to make a material instance of this, you could make these changes on the fly and really quickly change the speed and change the textures around. But I mean, for demonstration purposes, that gets the idea across of how this type of game would normally come up with adding some kind of texture or scrolling background into the shoot -em up style. And then obviously, if you're playing a side scroll or something, we can just come in and make it point 0.1 on the x-axis instead and that will be the difference of this scrolling from top to bottom to left to right. 
So we'll just come in and wait for that to compile and you can see exactly the same result, but in the other direction. Now, the other thing I want to change, I'm going to come in and select these two side panels and I've left these orange for the majority of this playlist just because it's easier to see them. Um, and when you're editing and playing about with these things, it's nice to have something quite vibrant so you can find it really easily. But now I want to hide it. I want to make the material black is going to be the first thing. So I'm just going to come straight in and make this a solid black. And I'm also going to find the shadow settings in this. And it looks like we've already done it, but this is just going to make sure that we are not casting shadows from this. So this is going to look a little bit like, uh, if you look at games like Ikaruga, where they've got that nice perspective setup for the screen, and they've got uh, black bars at the sides where you can put things like the health panels, score, text, things like that really uh, can come in here. So obviously if you wanted to widen these to make up for the gameplay zone and things, to add some text inside then you could use those uh, black panels now for that kind of setup. And then the final thing I said we'd do is we're going to go through the more complex material. Similar to how we made the first material then, we're going to go into the textures. We'll go down to our T underscore space, right click on this, and we will create a material. This one we can call pretty much anything. And again, the main reason we're doing this is so that we get our texture sample. We don't need to create one ourselves. Now, what I'm actually going to do is rather than creating this from scratch, I uh, just wanted to make sure that you guys were able to get some of the main things included, which really is the texture sample. I'm going to run through this and I'll break down how and why this is being set up. So what we have is a standard material. So if we just click either on our box here or on the background or the graph, we'll see that we have the surface, which is opaque and default lit. So pretty much standard settings when you create new material. Now, what we're doing off of the base color is we have four different copies of the texture sample. So in fact, you can go ahead and do that. Take the texture sample you already have and just copy it another three times. And we'll also want four of the panner nodes too. So if we just start off by connecting the panner nodes into the texture samples, we kind of already know what this is doing. So what these are are just adding movement to the texture samples. Now, the really important thing that we're doing over here segregate this off into sections. So this section really is controlling the base color. So I'm just going to hit a comment around this and we'll say base color. So these are the nodes responsible for the result on the base color. What we have is a vector three. Now this vector three is a kind of off white color. So if we just go in here, you can see they're all roughly 0.6. So if you wanted to make another vector three of about the same values, just go with 0.6. We then have a second vector three, which is roughly 0.4 to 5. And again, 0.6 on blue, so it's a slightly bluer white. We then have two multiplies, so off of the first color, we're multiplying on the blue channel of the first texture. Now this is quite important, this is something which is kind of related to the 2D editors that you'd be using, so in uh, something like Photoshop you'll have your different color channels, So, and you can put in different textures or maps to the different channels. So this is taking the map on the blue channel, it's multiplying it by the white color. We're then taking our kind of blue color, and again, we're multiplying the second texture sample also by the blue channel. So this is important that we're pulling this out from the correct channels. So as you're following along, make sure you do that. But then taking these results and we're adding them together. And when we've added those together, we then have our base color. So the values that we're actually plugging into these, though, so we've got our panel values again. The bottom texture is simply taking a texture coordinate. So to get this, we can, it's not actually found under text coord, it's a texture coordinate. So if you wanted to find that, it's make sure you look for your texture coordinates. And this has got the default values and then just a tiling change value for the U and the V of 0.75. That's being plugged into the coordinate, which is controlling how this is mapping across. And the time is obviously being controlled by this multiply, which is just being multiplied by the time node. So again, this is a standard node. This isn't custom made. This is literally a search for time. We've got a time mode and this is returning kind of like a delta seconds as you'd see in blueprints. And this is being multiplied by two. So we can see here that's represented by times two. So that's being plugged in there. It's also being plugged in this top panel. And then if we move on down, we'll find out what the bump offset is. So again, another standard node, just type bump offset, you'll get one of these. And what we have is another texture coordinate. This one's a lot smaller. So this is going to be mapped a lot further. It's going to create a lot more tiles. And this is at 0 0.002 on the U and the V. Again, going into coordinate. And then the height this time is just a single scalar parameter of minus 10. And we can see that the height ratio has been set to 0 0.005 and a reference plane of 0 0.5. Now that's being plugged into the coordinate up here on the panel going into the top texture. So that is literally now everything which sets up the base color. Just move that up there, it makes a bit more sense. 
apologies for the budgie he likes talking whilst i'm talking apparently so just below here we're going to go into the second thing which we have is the emissive color so this is just providing a little bit of light without actually needing any lighting in the game which is again perfect for this type of game so all we're doing uh, similar to our base color we're adding two things together and they're just the results of two multiplications again now this is really important because what we'll look at on these texture samples and we'll just board this off and again we'll just give this a comment for emissive so we know this is what is uh, controlling the emissive value of the material so what we have here the first texture sample is we're actually pulling this from the red channel and the second one we're pulling from the green channel so from the red one we're adding the red and the green together we're then multiplying the result of that by again a kind of off-white color this time roughly 0 0.5 0 0.6 and 0.7 and we're adding that with a bluish color, which we've got 0 0.1, 0 0.15, and 0.3. And we're multiplying that against another texture sample. And this texture sample is actually one of the engine defaults. So if I was to press the magnifying glass here, you'll see that you actually need to go into the view options, show engine content, and you'll need to search through and find the gizmo texture. So again, this is going to be really, really useful if you actually get this from the content examples instead. Uh, because that will already have this assigned. Now what's interesting to note here is if we look at the texture samples we can see that we have these red dots and they're in slightly different places depending on what channel we're on and some of them they're a lot more or less exaggerated as well and that's what the difference in channels can be used for. So when the artist was setting this up they would have applied slightly different thicknesses um, and mappings to these different channels which is what we're pulling out by these multiplications and the alterations being made here. And then the final things again, we're just getting our panner offsets. Uh, we've got, we've seen already the bump offset, same values as above. Our texture coordinate, which are going into these, we have 0, 3, and 1.5 this time. So again, these are going to be the bigger, fatter styles, um, which are being mapped less times and will look bigger. And we have the height value for the first one at minus 5, and the height value for the second at minus 10. And again, the standard bump offset values are 0 0.05 and 0.5. So they're being plugged back into the texture samples and this is just causing the emissive color. So if we turn this off, you'll see that we only have the smaller textures which are being tiled more often and we've lost the styles altogether. So this is actually quite interesting if you wanted to get a more visual representation of what's happening. If we were to just untick these, then we can see that the emissive is controlling the scrolling styles and it's just a black background, which actually I think looks pretty cool. So I might come in and we'll give this a go. So if we go into the main window, just going to unshow the engine content. We'll go to the materials. I'm just going to find the material that I've been playing with, and I'll plug that on to the background. And there we go. Now I have a, a dark black background with stars scrolling down. And if you wanted that kind of pixelated background that they provide by default, then we just plug in the base color calculations again. So as I said, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense what all of these nodes are doing, how they go together, how uh, different things are being pulled out, different channels of the texture samples. As I mentioned, um, it's a fairly complex material, but if you did want to get the exact values for everything, and I'd be providing a link for this complete project somewhere on Google Drive, so have a look in the description and you can find that and pull the material out of my project, or alternatively go to the content examples and all of the values and everything, the exact materials in there. The important thing is to get the idea of how and why they're being used in that way. If I come back in here now, again, we've got that pixelated square background to go with our kind of QB models that we have. Uh, but <laughs> to be honest, I really, I really quite prefer the, uh, <laughs> looking at this, I prefer our star background. I think that just looks pretty cool. Nice and uh, minimalistic there. So add these together however you like. And the other thing with looking at all of this, you can now start playing about maybe with something more like this that I showed at the beginning of the video. Maybe start trying to see what you can pull out of the different channels on this. If you wanted to add things like clouds to one layer of the channel um, and pull the clouds out so you can have clouds scrolling with this. Uh, different things like that can be really interesting to start playing around with with materials. So maybe start with something simple and start working up until you flesh it out and get an understanding of getting something more complex like this. But with that said, um, minus a build of the project to get rid of the lighting error, we now have a complete project. We have a beginning of the game, we have a game over menu, we have a scoring system, we have health. Uh, so we've covered a lot of things in this playlist. So I'm going to leave this one here, and hopefully I will see you all in the next set of videos that I make. As ever though, if you've enjoyed this or find the video useful, then please do leave a like and share the videos around, that's really helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.